Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. This video, I'm going to discuss how can a quarter wave transformer actually use for impedance matching. Next, I'm give you an example how can we actually design this quarter wave transformer in order to perform an impedance matching. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 11 series discussion on impedance matching. So guys, if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this video, feel free to drop me an email. Before I continue, guys, I need your help. I need your help by like this video. When you actually like this video, this video will be able to podcast to a larger audience. So guys, please help me out by like this video. If you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Or maybe later on, when you learn something from this video, again, I urge you guys to support this channel by subscribe to this channel if you are new. Please also on your notification bell so that in the future, you will be able to receive notification from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for strong support. Okay, let's quickly understand Okay, what is actually a quarter wave transformer? Okay, so this quarter wave transformer, in fact, is a very useful and practical circuit for impedance matching. And it also provides a very simple transmission line circuit that further illustrate the properties of standing wave on a mismatch line. Okay, so maybe I'll just give you some idea what is actually a quarter wave transformer. Okay, in fact, this way of doing impedance matching is the easiest. Okay, quarter wave transformer, probably later on you will see that you just need one formula in order to implement this quarter wave transformer in order to perform impedance matching. If you take a look on this diagram here, okay, imagine that this is actually the input and output port. Okay, basically, most of the time, okay, this part here is a 50 ohm. Let's say this is a transistor. Okay, when the input impedance of the transistor, typically they won't be at 50 ohm. So therefore, we can actually implement this quarter wave transformer in order to perform impedance matching. As the name implies, okay, so the length of this impedance okay, transformer basically will be lambda over 4, quarter wave length. So basically, this gives you some idea how easy it is to use this quarter wave transformer to implement impedance transformer. When we can actually use this quarter wave transformer when we actually want to do this impedance matching. Okay, so there are actually three cases then we will be able to use this quarter wave transformer. Okay, first case here, when we want to do matching impedance between a Receptive load. Okay, receptive load means that, for example, 50 plus J something. Okay, you cannot have J something. Receptive means that you only have a pure 50 plus J, whatever term. Okay, you cannot afford to have it. Then it's a purely receptive load. And another will be a transmission line. So from here, you can see that basically a load and a transmission line, you can actually use this quarter wave transformer. Next. Okay, we can also use this quarter wave transformer when we actually want to do matching between two restrictive loads. Okay, so like what I mentioned, basically you cannot have any imaginary term or any J term. Okay, all must be purely restrictive load. Last but not least, basically you can also use this quarter wave transformer okay, to match two transmission lines that have different characteristic impedance. Okay, so this will be the three so-called cases, then you will decide to use this quarter wave transformer in order to implement impedance matching. Okay, let's understand a little bit from this diagram here in order to understand how can we actually 
design this quarter wave transformer or maybe in-depth understanding how this quarter wave transformer actually do a impedance matching. The figure below shows a circuit employ a quarter wave transformer. Okay, so over here, this is actually the quarter wave transformer. The load resistant RL, okay, remember I told you that the load cannot be imagined so there won't be RL plus J something term will be purely receptive. And the feed line characteristic impedance Z0 are both real and known. Okay, so basically this will be the so-called characteristic impedance typically will be 50 ohm. And this part here will be the impedance transformer by implementing this quarter wave transformer. And this is basically the load. Okay, these two components are connected with a lossless piece of transmission line. Okay, make, you need to know the characteristic impedance. So our task is to design this characteristic impedance Z1. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, basically they have a length of lambda over 4. Okay, so this is the quarter wave transformer having a transmission line length of lambda over 4. So our idea is how can we actually design this impedance in order to do this impedance matching. Okay, it is desired to match the load to the Z node. Okay, so basically to match this Z in, we need to match to the Z node okay, by using this lambda over 4 section of transmission line so that it meet this reflection coefficient equal to zero. Okay, so what happened here is basically, let's, let's say without the quarter wave transformer, this resistive load directly connected to Z node you can see that there will be a reflection coefficient. When we actually implement this quarter wave transformer, okay, we do not want to see any reflection anymore. So basically, this quarter wave transformer will perform an impedance matching. So when we actually do this, Z in is equal to Z naught, then we will not have any reflection coefficient. So basically, this is the role of quarter wave transformer. We introduce this length, water wave length, and with this impedance, therefore, everything will be matched. Z in is equal to Z naught, and hence, we will not have any reflection coefficient. How to do this? Okay, so if you guys okay, uh, cannot recall, I actually have so-called proof this equation at the transmission line. Okay, so basically, this is the equation for a transmission line. Okay, so I have proved it. This is a very generic form. Okay, but over here you can see that uh, there are a few form. For example, ZL, okay, that I proved on the transmission line, it can be imaginary, but for this quarter wave transformer, this ZL must be RL, so I replace them by RL. The Z1 term here, okay, basically will be replaced by Z0. Okay, uh, or at the transmission line, typically the characteristic impedance of the characteristic line of the transmission line typically will be 50 ohm. But for this case, okay, this quarter wave transformer will not be 50 ohm. So therefore, okay, I will be replaced them by this Z1 here. So this form, this equation is what I have proved on the transmission line theory. I changed some of the characteristics. For example, I changed the Z0 to Z1. As I told you that typically for transmission line, this will be Z0. But for this case, when we actually want to implement quarter wave transformer, this cannot be 50 ohm. So I use this Z1 to represent. Okay, and then another changes that I do will be ZL. I change to RL because it needs to be purely restrictive. And the transmission line is quarter wave length. So when we actually do this tangent 90, okay, you can see that this term actually become infinity. Okay, so this term become infinity. So what happened here is basically when this term become infinity, okay, which means that this number will be very, very, very large. So therefore, I will drop my RL and Z1. Can okay, you see here? Because this will be infinity, this will be infinity. They are much, much bigger as compared to RL. This term here will be much, much bigger as compared to Z1. Therefore, I remove my RL, I remove my Z1, I actually have this equation here. So in short, this equal to 0, 0. So therefore, I result to have this equation here. So next, I cancel, cancel my J term. I cancel my tangent 90. And what I left will be Z1 squared divided by RL as illustrated over here. Next. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned on the previous slide. Okay, I just want to put it here so that my discussion will be easier. So next task is 
I want to make this reflection coefficient is equal to zero. As I mentioned that in order for this to be equal to zero, my Z in need to be equal to Z naught, okay, which yield the characteristic impedance Z1 as following. So basically you can see from here, okay, my Z in need to be equal to Z naught. So this becomes Z naught. Okay, and then I want to get my Z1 term. Okay, basically you can see that okay, how to find my characteristic impedance of water wave transformer will be simply by just this one equation. Okay, with this one equation, you can actually design the quarter wave transformer. In short, this set one okay, can be calculated by using this equation here. Okay, basically, in short, you just need to know the characteristic impedance, typically will be 50 ohm, and you need to know your receptive load, okay, what will be the value, and you can actually design the quarter wave transformer by calculate this Z1 by using this equation. And keep this in mind, the length of the transmission line need to be quarter wave length. Okay, in addition, okay, this above condition apply only when the length of the matching circuit is lambda over four, or simply a odd multiply of lambda over four long. Okay, so that a perfect match may be achieved at one frequency. Okay, but impedance mismatch will occur at another frequency. In short, this method, we can only perform impedance matching at only one desired frequency. So this is what it means. Okay, so let us quickly do an example okay, in order to understand this better. Okay, before I continue on the example, again, guys, I need your help by like this video. Okay, when you actually like this video, this video will be able to reach a larger audience. If you learn something, please consider to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Let's quickly come to the example of this quarter wave transformer. Okay, for example, this is an example. Consider a load resistance. Okay, so basically the load resistance RL is equals to 100 ohm. Basically, they want to be matched to a 50 ohm. Okay, with a quarter wave transformer. Okay, so basically this is a quarter wave transformer. Okay, find the characteristics impedance of the matching session. Okay, earlier on I have introduced you this formula here. So you can know the value of Z0, which is 50. The value of this receptive load is 100. So from here, I can easily calculate that Z1, okay, which is the impedance for this quarter wave transformer, need to be 70.71 ohm. And the length of the transmission line need to be at lambda over 4. So over here, you can see that I can actually do this impedance transforming or impedance matching easily by implement this quarter wave transformer. What you need to know is basically this equation, okay? And you can easily decide a impedance matching. However, there are some trade off here. So before I done on a trade off, let me quickly do a quick conclusion on this quarter wave transformer. At the characteristics impedance of the quarter wave transformer, okay, the bandwidth for the transformer is at its widest. Okay, so in short, Okay, when the characteristic impedance of this quarter wave transformer, okay, for example, this 70.71, okay, the bandwidth for this transformer basically will be the widest, which means that they will be able to match the largest bandwidth as it last week over here. Okay, importantly, matching occurs at only one single frequency, which I have highlighted earlier on. Okay, we need to be very careful to do this frequency control method to ensure that the quarter wave transformer perform as expected. Fortunately, okay, we can have this multiple quarter wave length transmission line. Okay, just now I just show you one simple quarter wave transmission line. However, we can actually have this multiple quarter wave transmission line. Maybe on the next video on this impedance matching, I can do this multiple quarter wave transmission line. And therefore, when we actually have this multiple quarter wave length transmission line, we also increase the bandwidth and basically this will enhance the design of the quarter wave transformer. Having said that this method is one of the easiest way to do impedance transformer. Okay, however, okay, one last, one very major disadvantage of this quarter wave transformer is that the impedance matching is only possible if the load impedance is real. Okay, as I told you that for example, on the example is simply just 100 ohms of load, okay, you can see that the value need to be real. There's no imaginary turn. 
Okay, when we actually have a imaginary term, what will happen is basically, okay, we need to so called the complex load impedance. They must be converted to a real load impedance using this shunt reactive element. Okay, so basically, I have also done this on a Smith chart. How can we actually cancel away okay, the imaginary part by implementing this shunt reactive element? Okay, or an appropriate line of transmission line between load and quarter wavelength, then we can convert. Okay, for example, when we actually want to convert this complex load impedance into a receptive load Im impedance, then we need to implement, for example, a shunt reactive element, which I think that this will be much more easier. I have explained this okay, on my Smith chart discussion. So guys, if you want, okay, you can always look at my Smith chart discussion in order to understand this. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Again, guys, I urge you guys to help me by like this video and subscribe to this channel. Okay, over here, you can see that this way of design impedance matching okay, is the easiest by using this quarter wave transformer. You just need to have a single equation and then you need to ensure that the transmission line is quarter wavelength. Then you will be able to do impedance matching. However, when we actually use this method, we need to keep this in mind that the load can, must be a pure receptive value. With this, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.